Hello everyone, welcome to Jargus Ranger Review. This time we'll be looking at the 16th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Gorilla Art. And finally, since the start of the series, we've had these illusions from Skrazo about something named Vargoyle that he's hiding from him in the cyber dimension. And finally, he shows up. First of all, Skrazo has combined the data chips into one little device that can power them up. Of course, Vargoyle attacks him right away, and this guy looks cool. The guy is dark, he's all in black, half his face is covered up, he has his dreadlock things on the back of his head, sort of like a predator, and he moves fast and he hits hard. And he wants the Fury Cells, to which he blames Blazer Moxie for. Cause yeah, they kinda did steal it from him. Scrazo did not want to part with them. Of course, Evox intervenes, and he's impressed by how strong he is. And recruits the creation of Scrozzle. Yes, this is actually Scrozzle's first creation. One of the first. And he went berserk when the other Fury Cells got absorbed into his body. Becoming rebellious and evil. Therefore, Evox promises him both the data chip powers, as well as some of his own power, if he helps him out and helps him get back into the human world. To which his powerful adversary happily agrees. Now before all this went down, the Rangers had a quick battle against uh, Robotron, called Turbotron, based off of a jet engine, along with both Blaze and Moxie in the fray. Blaze and Moxie got defeated off screen, and Robbie had to face this Robotron by himself, and he could not resist the wind powers of his engine blowing. That is until Smash with his giant body intervened. He blocked the wind himself, taking some damage, so Robbie's able to just use his blaster to destroy his fan and just completely blow him up on his own. This one, while he had some annoying attacks, could really not do much in the fight. It was over quickly. However, in the aftermath, it turns out that Smash's Zord interface functions had been corrupted. So when Vorgo does show up, Nate stays behind in the lab to help get Smash back in order. Now this robot is smart. He is stealing Morphex, but he appears in a cloak and pretends to be weak, and he distracts the Rangers by pulling them away from when he's stealing the Morphex. And while they're fighting, the Giga Drone version of Turbotron shows up. Devin has to fight it, but he really can't get to it because it's shooting lightning blast down at him and it's sucking up the Morphex from above. He just can't get up that high with the Racer Zord. So Zoe leaves the battle to help with the Chopper Zord, but it's blasts of wind are too much for it to get close to do damage. And finally Nate finishes with fixing Smash, so Ravi leaves so he can help with the Wrecker Zord, leaving only Steel to fight him. At which point, Vargil, who's been bounding cables, just breaks him free and just beats up Steel a lot until he's forced to demore. And he's amazed and even laughs at how the, he's a robot ranger. And he's about to use his blaster to finish off Steel, but Nate shows up and bails him out. And Vargo, having gotten a bunch of Morphex, decides to just leave the battle. He got what he wanted. Evox is very impressed by this and grants the data chip powers of all the Power Rangers beast abilities to Vargoyle. Blaze and Moxie are not happy about this and feel betrayed, and they determine that they must work together to stop this so that they can get what they deserve. And of course, Skrulls is just happy that no one's trying to kill him now. <laughs> And now the Turbo Drone is defeated by Smash using his legs as a springboard for the Racer Zord to just launch up and slash it with his finishing move to destroy it. Pretty quick and simple, but a nice change of pace for the battle. But here's a question. Why is this episode called Gorilla Art? Why was Smash, of all characters, out in the open? Well, that's because of what happened a little while back in Tuba Triumph. Ravi is, does more than just sketches, he's really good at art and is, can even paint. And he's painting while talking to the real Roxy's body. It helps put him at ease. But he's only truly shown her his artistic abilities, and he hides it from everyone else, even his fellow ranger. And when Smash sees him doing this late at night, he deactivates him and presses some buttons on the back room to delete the last few minutes of his memories. And so he hides it inside the lab and tries to act like nothing happened. Big mistake, because he hits the wrong button somewhere, and as soon as Smash is activated, he feels compelled to paint. First, he does a few stuff in the lab on the table, but it's too small. So he goes out to the park and starts painting basically a big mural on the building. And Ben and Betty are the first to find it, which of course is reported to the commander. And the two of them try to wash it away with a power hose, 
but the recoil is so much it sends them falling backwards into a lake or into some sort of pond. Either way, it's some sort of body of water standing by the park. That's the other moment, and this is the true reason why Smash cannot use his Zord programming, as well as why he was there to help Ravi in person during the regular Robotron battle. So Nate figures that he had to be reprogrammed somehow for this to happen to him, to be so obsessed with painting when he never did it before. And Kamenna Shaw's like disgusted about it. She says that no one at Grid Battle Force should be wasting their time pursuing the arts. They're much more important. She really looks down on it for some reason. And this is why Ryu feels so compelled to hide it. Because of his mother, he's afraid she won't approve of his passion. Of his hobby that he's very talented at. And as soon as she's out of the room, Ravi comes clean. He shows the other rangers what he's been doing. And tells them, as well as why he did it. I mean, they're very impressed by it, but he still doesn't think his mother would understand his pursuits. So when Vorgo does make his attack, Nate says everything will be fine. And that's why he was late to the battle. And in the epilogue, we find out that Smash knew all along about his abilities, as well as the fact that the commander wouldn't like it. And since he's programmed to protect Ravi, he never said anything. He kept it a secret. And so Ravi felt really dumb about it. He even gave his robot buddy a hug. Oh yeah, buckets of soap that were using to wash up the paint. Ben and Betty sit on a loose table. It flies up and hits them in the head. But the two of them laugh about it, so they're not really hurt. And that's the episode. Even though I'm speeding through this really quickly, it was actually a really good episode. I mean, we got to see more of Ravi as a person, his personal dilemmas, both with Roxy, as well as his artwork. It was not just a one-off thing with the Joey episode, and it really hammered in that Commander Shaw is not a fan of the arts, which allows, hopefully, for some character development with her to grow closer to her son and be a little more than just a strict-as-hell commander who is also the mother of one of her soldiers. So I'm really hoping we get to see this coming forward. And last but not least, we finally have Vargoyle's appearance, as well as reaching the climax of the Data Chip saga. Vargo is freaking great. I mean, he has lots of personality. I mean, he's really aggressive and wants to fight. And he's obviously toying with his opponents. And even usurps command from the two avatars. So he has a lot going for him in just a quick appearance on his first episode. And hopefully we get to see a lot more of him because he is really good to see in battle. I mean, that's all he's done for it, is just fight and have a few words of dialogue. So let's see what really happens going forward. I'm excited to see what happens, and I hope you are too. It's an A-plus episode. I have really nothing to complain about. And Ben and Betty weren't the butt of a joke this time. They were kind of a bit careless, but even Devin says they should have seen that coming. And the two of them seem to agree and just think it's funny. So for one of their misfortune isn't just to make them suffer as comic relief this time. Well, yeah, it kind of is because they're making stuff for comic relief. But this time, they're part of the main plot, and really, they're doing all good all the time. They're not being bumbling fools. They're just a little bit unlucky. Which I like that. It shows that they're a lot more mature than they often appear to be. I mean, their first move when they saw Smash outside was to tell the commander to try to get him back into Grid Battle Force base. Anyway, this episode. The review was short and sweet, but it was definitely worth watching. And I hope you join me to talk about the next episode. Until then, I've been Jargus. Thanks for watching, and let the power protect you. 